Welcome to the stage our participants, the political stars of the future, the wings beneath the wind of democracy, starting with Adam Brand, Chair of the Princess Street branch of Young Labour. Adam is studying engineering at the University of Auckland and he prefers to commute on a vintage motorcycle Phil Goff style. Welcome Adam, let's keep moving. The Young Greens have a co-convener model. And here they are. Danielle Marks and Matariki Roach. Welcome. It's them. In a, in a fluke, of, fluke of fate, the Greens not only have a co-leadership but a cohabitation policy for the young Greens this time. Danielle Te Arawa is studying law and politics at Waikato. Matariki Ngati Raukawa is studying Te Reo at Waikato, is working as a medical receptionist. Welcome to you. The president of Young Act, aka Prebles Rebels, is Felix Poole. Come on in, Felix. <laughs> Felix is studying law and communications at the University of Auckland, and his previous work experiences include grimy tasks such as pumping petrol on the night shift and assisting David Seymour. Welcome, Felix. <laughs> The chair of Young New Zealand First is Jay McLaren Harris. Here he is. Jay is Mani Apoto. He is an entrepreneur. He is a motivational speaker. We're about to get the best of that. And he works for the Moko Foundation. Welcome, Jay. Finally, welcome to the stage, Ariana Nafisi, the Northern Regional Chair of the Young Nation. Ariana is studying law and commerce at Auckland. She has two chickens called Valentino and Dolce. Neither can be with us tonight. And they're alive, they're not, they're not dead. But they, they just, they can't. Enough about that. Let's get straight into it. Uh, what we're going to begin with is we're going to ask each of our debaters to take 30 seconds. I'm going to ruthlessly enforce that 30 seconds. But what we want to hear is we want you, you to imagine that you have before you a sea of first time voters undecided voters, and your challenge is to convince them why they should not just vote, but vote for your party. Do you want to kick us off, Adam? Good, everyone. It's a pleasure and a privilege to be with you tonight, and especially a privilege to be gathered in public like this tonight. And really, the only reason we can be here tonight in this way is because the team of five million pulled together, did the mahi, and now we're here, but also from the leadership of Jacinda Ardern. She was able to steady the tiller, lead us through this crisis as she has done before, but we're not out of it yet. There's more to go. Let's not stop now. Let's keep moving. Danielle. Oh, shit, it's a hard one. Uh, kia ora, tēnā tato katoa e mihi ana ki a koutou katoa i tēnei wai o te tau. So the Young Greens and the Green Party of Aotearoa New Zealand are here first for people of New Zealand for tangata whenua. We are the only party that actually acknowledges and upholds te tiriti o Waitangi. And because of that, we are, we are a party for the people and the planet and see the intrinsic beauty of both. And that is why you should party vote Green. <laughs> Good start, good start, but so far leaving lots of seconds on the floor. Can Felix nail the 30 seconds? Go. New Zealand lives on a pandemic planet, but our geography offers us great advantages compared to continental countries. People want to come here and they want to live, they want to spend and they want to earn. But we can only take advantage of that if we cut taxes, reform the RMA, put money into our border and pay down the debt. ACT is aspirational and we say that we can lead the country not only in COVID response, but COVID recovery. Thank you, Felix. Jay, New Zealand First, go. Uh, tēnā rā koutou katoa na miki a koutou. You know, I joined New Zealand First for one reason and one reason only. Because I feel and I realise that the effects that were being made in Wellington were being felt all around our regions. And dare I say, were being felt by our most vulnerable. And I've experienced that firsthand. I joined New Zealand First because we are a straight-thinking, forward-moving, and dare I say it, a party that is for all New Zealanders. You know, over the last, we've backed our future, so hey, back hey, your hey, future. Hey, there you go. Man. Thank you very much, Jay. To round us off, Ariana. 
Look, I think it's really simple. We're facing the toughest economic and health crisis we ever have, and we need a national government because we've actually got a plan to get us through, and we've got the competence too. We want to make sure you've all got jobs and make sure you get the opportunities that you all deserve. Um, we're aspirational for New Zealand, and we've got a strong track record too. We got through the global financial crisis, we got through Christchurch earthquake, and we'll get through this too. Great job, everyone. Raise your hand if you want to become a member of parliament. <laughs> I just want to be clear that we are recording this. <laughs> and if you don't raise your hand, and then you do become a member of parliament, you will have to resign immediately. <laughs> I think you can't really say, like, right now, because I'm not going to be, I don't want to become an MP tomorrow or miss the next couple of years. But in a couple of years, yeah, sure, I'd love to, like, say 10 years. But it depends on my family and if I think I'm actually the right fit to represent a community which becomes available. So you do want to become an MP in 10 years? Yeah, but it's not really my... Yes, I'd like to, but whether or not I do will depend on not me, but the communities, etc. OK, Jay. Oh, no, look, I don't want to say yes and then I don't, and I don't want to set that expectation for our rangatai uh, to, who say they are but then don't. So I'm here to say, look, every opportunity is possible if you put your mind to it. Felix, I have a feeling you might say in one of the oh, episodes yeah. that you don't want to be an MP. Is I'm afraid you? of aeroplanes and, uh, you know, as I understand it, when you become a member of parliament, you, you lose a lot of privacy, and I value that privacy a lot, so... So privacy and aeroplanes are the reasons. Yeah, exactly. Two very strange reasons, I know. Yeah, no, it's good. It's compelling. Uh, Matariki. Oh, I've got, a, I've got a long list of reasons. Um, I guess the Let's big... have two of them. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> OK, uh, well, firstly, uh, Parliament is a uh, Westminster colonial structure, and I think that the... Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, that the mahi that we're doing within the Young Greens is pushing from within without having to, you know, like, really be bound by that. Um, also, uh, the theory of change, you know, I think that, you know, we're a flax roots uh, movement, the Green Party, and that's where I want to be. That's where I see the most inspiring people. That's where I see real change change and that's 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 where I see the drive so that's where I want to be okay. all right Adam. Adam you're not on the list but at the moment Labour are polling so high that you might need to find yourself <laughs> anyway well I just I mean I can give two reasons as well and the first one is I don't have Twitter second one is I'm not a lawyer and that seems to be the main two credentials for being it's in a parliament. really harsh <laughs> critique of the Labour Party right there isn't it <laughs> That one's definitely going in the story. Um, <laughs> all right. I want to ask you um, a very quick question and then a longer one. First of all, just because I'm curious. In the, the slogan last time round, you probably know your own Labour people, let's, let's, let's do this. Let's do this. What was this? I never really... <laughs> <laughs> I want... Oh, you, much, you said a you short know? question. Do you want me to list it all out? That's going to take a little bit what, longer. What, I mean, what is it in a nutshell? Is it transformational government? Transformational government is doing things that were long overdue. I mean, just to pluck one off the top of my head, is that removing abortion from the Crimes Act. That was long overdue. Let's do this. It's stuff like that that was long overdue, but Labor had the courage to bring it to the table and said, let's do that now. Um, I want to skip over to you, Ariana, and start with a, with a general knowledge question. It's a bit of a tricky one to see how up to date you are with current affairs. Who is the current leader of the National Party? <laughs> I'm not sure now. It's Judith Collins. We all know that. Judith Collins. OK. Can you uh, explain to us as best you can what the Judith Collins vision of New Zealand is? Is it, is it, um, is it more? Seriously, is it more than four-lane highways? Oh, no. <laughs> Look, you know, don't get down the four-lane highways. When I was up in Northland, people were loving it. They're like, oh, that four-lane highway. So, you know, we're not... We're jappers, so, you know... Um, let's but people are looking for a vision, right? Like, what is, yeah. the, what is, the, what is well, the vision? I think the vision is, like, actually, that infrastructure plan, it shows what Shiro stands for. It's not building for today or tomorrow. It's building for generations to come, so we've all got opportunities. It's forward-thinking how government should be. Jay, New Zealand the First has achieved a lot in this term. So why is it going so badly in the polls? Is it, is it a failure of leadership or are the voters morons? As Judith Collins would say, it's rogue polls. Um, <laughs> no, look, we, look, 
we are doing the best that we can. You know, some of our ministers, our MPs, are the hardest working members of parliament you will ever meet. Shane Jones worked every day for three months. You know, <laughs> every day for three months. Just three months. <laughs> every day for three months and for three years, he's doing it. But no, look, we are, as, as we all know, the only polls that, are, that matter are the ones on election day. And everybody, every, every election year says New Zealand first won't get it. New Zealand first won't hold the power. But then all, all the time, but one, we've got him back into parliament. And 2017, we held that power. Love it. Um, Matariki. The Green Caucus this time around, have they really, have they been too polite? I mean, I'm thinking, for example, of the line in the uh, Confidence and Supply Agreement, which reads, we will overhaul the welfare system. And I don't think anyone could, with a straight face, suggest the welfare system had been overhauled. And if Jay's mates, that had happened to them, they would have been kicking and screaming about it. What's going on? Where are the radical roots? I would love to see you say that to Jan Logie and Marama Davidson oh, yeah. and Golrez Karamov's face. I would love to hear um, you say that. Uh, yeah, um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we've ever had a problem with being too polite. Mm -hmm. um, I think being in government's a new experience for us. Um, as I mentioned before, parliament is a structure that should not belong in this country. Um, and there is a game that has to be played. I don't think we're playing it, and I'm really happy about that. Um, I think that, you know, uh, these pretty feisty people within the caucus, and I don't think I would ever call them polite. Thank you. <laughs> Felix, is the ACT Party surge in the polls a result of pandering to the gun lobby or David Seymour's dancing? No, no, absolutely not. And, you know, I'd like to say, first of all, you know, we've had two years of 1% polls and we never called any of those polls a roll poll. And ultimately, I think the growth in the ACT Party is because we are the real opposition. We've been 119 to 1 on so many bills, on zero carbon and on guns, and we think that People want to vote for that. People want to see change, and they want to see change in this government. Your, your philosophy is about shrinking the state to the size of a prune. Absolutely. You know, it's, a, it's a very attractive, attractive theory, right? To some. But what we've seen very recently <laughs> with the COVID crisis is the importance of a strong, capable government, right? And the bigger crisis, the climate crisis that is hurtling towards us, requires strong capable government, doesn't it? Absolutely, and, and sometimes government is required. In a recession, you know, government does need to, to a certain extent, enlarge itself and take out debt in order to support the economy. But I think that having a, a, you know, a free market party critique at times the government's wasteful spending means that we do better in the long term. In, in, you know, in a couple of years' time, once we take out this debt, we're going to be spending more on interest than on education, partly because of these guys' wasteful spending when it comes to the provincial growth fund and fees free. The exit party says that when you're in that wasteful spending, I mean, to make sure that we keep our government expenditure low so that we can maintain our core public services for the future. Because if we don't, all of that is going to come under attack in a couple of years. But you appreciate there's a... Sorry, before, you, you, you appreciate the climate... You, you, you think the climate crisis is oh, real, absolutely, assuming, absolutely. Right? And the Act so, Party... So you do need a strong government to tackle that going forward? Well, not necessarily. You can have private enterprise and innovation do that. What the Act Party says <laughs> is that we want GMO reform, we want waste to management reform, we want RMA reform, because when you allow people to bring in new technology, sustainable technology, you get real change. The Greens laugh there, but the reality is, is they've blocked GMO reform in this country for years and prevent us from adopting new sustainable technologies that reduce the methane output of cows. And, you know, I think it's appalling that they stand for the environment, that, but they do that. OK, thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's go for a let's go for a show of hands again. Uh, who of you believes that the Prime Minister should have visited Ihumato in the last year? Big strong waving hand here. I'd double hand that. Adam, Adam I'll put this put this one to you because it's a, a complex one for you. But the Prime Minister spoke at Waitangi in 2018 and challenged. Māori to hold her to account on doing the right thing for Tangata Whenua. Do you not think that symbolically it would have been important for Jacinda Ardern to step foot on Ere Mato? So are you saying what's important? Symbolic gestures, which might be important, it might be well appropriate in due course, or what is actually important is that she got everyone around the table to have that discussion and not instead the government coming in saying what it's going to be. 400 houses. What? 
the thing about each matter is that there's not one side on any issue, okay? Mana whenua are on both sides of the issue, and it's very complex. The government can't just come in there and say what the solution is going to be. It's about letting mana whenua bring the solution together and supporting them in that process. That's what do they've wanna, done. Do you want to come back on that, Danielle? Oh, as someone who occupied that Benoit for, for a very long time, um, and just to, just for everyone to know, it was 380 days right now that Jacinda Ardern says that she will go and hasn't gone. Um, but what 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 are you saying? One of Benoit have presented it. They want their land back. It's as simple oh, wow. as that. She's, she, what people tend to forget is the fact that she is an arts and cultural uh, portfolio holder and she has the ability to give it under a cultural lens, but she doesn't want to do that and it's very telling and mana whenua have been calling her out for so many years. It didn't just happen last year, it goes back to the UN. She, Pania has been there through and through, through every single mechanism and Jacinda doesn't want to listen to her, so... Where do you, what do you, what do you, thank you. Where do you stand on this one, Jay? You, uh, Winston Peters has been, is reportedly and by his own account, been trying to stop the deal going through that has been underway with various parties. What's, where, where do you... Oh, he hasn't tried to stop it. No, that, that's absolutely incorrect. That's not right? No. And I ask, you know, why don't we send Grant Robertson there as the Minister for Finance who has responsibility over that land? When we talk about our treaty partners, when we talk about the Treaty of Waitangi, the Treaty of Waitangi, and every treaty settlement that has happened, you know, when we put our Prime Minister or the leader of our country that undermines every other treaty that we've gone through and that we've succeeded. You know, look at uh, Ngāti Whātua, who are still trying to set their settlement. You look at uh, Ngāi Tahu, who are doing absolutely amazing stuff. Imagine if the Prime Minister set that precedence uh, that every other treaty could be, a treaty um, settlement could be undermined. And I don't, think that's, I don't think that's correct. No, not at all. We, we shouldn't forget that on September 19, there are two other boxes for ticking, and those are the, the referendums. Who, who of you will be voting yes in the referendum to legalise cannabis? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to throw to you, Ariana. That's interesting, because this is an issue that divides along different party lines. Yeah, and, like, firstly, I do want to point out this is, you know, there's no strict party line. This is my personal opinion. I will be most probably voting against legalising it. Um, just because I don't think it's... I think it's a cop-out solution, you know. We've, it's been presented as a way to solve gangs, make it safer, etc. It's not going to eliminate the black market. I have issues of commercialising weed, and I also um, have issues around drug driving and also productivity. Maybe in a few years, after seeing how Canada's taken it, sure, we should put it here, but not enough evidence. And uh, also, I just really support medicinal use and... There's nothing against that. So that's why National never did medicinal use? We brought in medicinal cannabis. We've brought Actually, in the misuse of drugs no, act. Can I and just the point tell you, Dr. Sit. Shane really drafted something to make medicinal cannabis more accessible. And who didn't put that free? It's through, it's you. Yeah, party. because it was full of holes more so than Swiss cheese. The so point why didn't you is, make it better and put it if you can, If you can regulate the content of THC to make it safe for consumption, if you can stop police resources being wasted on drug offences and onto actual problems in our society, better utilisation of state resources, wouldn't you exactly. say, Felix? Exactly. Completely behind you. Completely uh -huh. behind you. Yeah? And I so thought you care about mental do... health, too. So why are we locking people up? <laughs> Is that going to be better for mental health if we lock people up for drug offences like no, cannabis? No, I'm talking about the effect we can have on mental health. Great well, Obviously, effect. we're trying to reduce <laughs> harm, Ayana. <laughs> Let, let's go to Felix. You want to legalise everything. Oh, yeah, right? you know... <laughs> That's man, man. Young Act has a lot of disagreements with the main party, and this is one of them. It's around drug policy. We believe that we should legalise all drugs to a certain extent because we believe that, ultimately, the more you can control... What do you mean, to a certain extent? Oh, well... <laughs> Obviously, you've got to have constraints about the way it's consumed. So, for example, when it comes to methamphetamine, that kind of thing, um, you can only consume that in labs with you know, a nurse looking over you to make sure you know, it's all OK. But it's still, you know, to an extent, legalised and available for people. But we think that if you, you know, really want to follow a harm reduction approach, then drug legalisation is the only way to go. Or Young Act thinks that, not Act Party. Not Act Party policy. Jay, um... I'm curious to know why, why you won't be voting yes. Isn't it fair to say that um, the criminalisation of cannabis has led to disproportionate 
uh, arrests and incarcerations of Tangata Whenua in New Zealand over the years? Well, you actually haven't also asked who will be voting no and who will be voting yes. Okay, so I didn't put abstain. my hand up because I'm not educated on this topic as much as other people are, and we need to take educated approaches around these things. So I've still got till September 19 to become educated okay. to, to make these decisions. That's why we're sending it to referendum, so that our Fano and our Tamariki and our Rangatai have a future that they are educated on. Nothing that's, you know, if, if Felix over here wants to have a quick joint behind well, his curtains or, no, I, I or we think, want to go over no, here and do this, I, I think, Jody, that's where we have to no, decide I think you've that been the education... No, Felix, I'm sorry, I'm talking, just talking you're just trying to express an opinion. No, and, you know, if, if stop, young want to stop do that, hiding behind let me say knowledge. this. Let, let him finish <laughs> the point, Felix. Let him finish no, 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 hang on a sec, hang on a sec. No, absolutely not. He cut me off, so I'm going to continue talking. And this is the problem, right? We need to become educated before making decisions. And I feel a lot of people are out there that are just doing it because it's jumping on bandwagons, because it's the thing to do. We need to become educated to make sure that we have a future. I trust everyone in this room to make that decision. And I think Jay is hiding behind the fact that he, you know, is not educated and doesn't want to express an opinion on this. I think we should express an opinion on this, and New Zealand should be forward thinking on this issue. Well, actually, I didn't even know the difference between legalisation and criminalisation. So how can oh, I, I want be to educated all about that? I'd suggest right? you all come to a young green event where we're bringing um, people that... Oh, you're bringing that... somewhere around the circle? Oh, we... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But if you want to actually be educated, then put yourself in those... In those oh, and I've got till September 19 to do that. Um, do you just want to finish, finish, finish that point, Danielle? What's the, what's, what's the essence of your argument for legalising? Oh, I mean, it's, I, I agree with Jay. That you, you, we do need to be educated on these things. It is something that's kind of brand new to some people, and we need to allow for people to become educated. So that's why you should come to the Young Greens of Aotearoa Facebook page, where we hold Zoe's, and we have all these um, beautiful images that we've worked with, um, like Kayad. We've worked with a lot of um, Tangata Whenua groups here in Auckland to produce these images so that we are actually educated on these issues from a Māori perspective and not from... Other people. All right, OK. <laughs> Thank you very much. Let's very quickly do the hand thing one more time on the assisted dying bill. Raise your hand if you'd be voting yes to, to David Seymour's bill on assisted dying. There's an unsure here. There's two there. There's an unsure Undecided. there. There's JD. Have you decided on this one? Or are you still... Well, no, I haven't become educated on that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I've got to 19th to do that. And I think everybody in this, in this country, every voter in this country has the right to become educated. And for people to say stuff like that, what, what is, are we belittling every other person out there that isn't educated on it? We, this is the future. This is the future of people's lives. And we need to become educated about it, not just jump on bad wagons because it's the cool thing to do. Your party is a party of referendums, right? You love the referendums. You want to have <laughs> referendums about whether we should have referendums. Have you not yet, as an educated, intelligent young man, and educated yourself on these? Oh, I, I've done some research, but I don't feel I'm comfortable and confident enough All right. to make that point. Right. OK, that's thank you. Enough. I would just like to total call you, Jay, because I think that's a really brave thing to be able to say that you're not educated enough on something, mm. especially in a youth politics space, and I really want to mihi to you on that. Let me get to the couple. There's, there's beautiful scenes. I love these beautiful scenes. Can, you guys can have a beautiful scene as well with Ariana, who is, uh, who is someone who is, I think I'm right in saying, you're committed to uh, tackling the climate change crisis? Yeah. Yeah? You guys are committed to tackling the... What about... Why, why can't the Greens change their approach so that a National Party Green government is possible in the cause of the climate? So, you know National doesn't care about, like, marginalised communities, you know that? Like, that's something that... <laughs> we want to help people out of poverty and National does it. We've seen it in the past how many so, years they've been in Parliament. So, like, there's pretty fundamental issues... Can I just say, what's the priority about? of the Green Party? Is it climate change or is it the social justice stuff? Why... It's... You can't separate them. How can you have one without the other? If someone really cared about the environment, they'd put separate, like, differences aside to reach for the best outcome. I think what's really sad, actually, is that Green's been sold out for the Kermit Act sanctuary to look after NZ First, to look after... Also, if they... No, well, did you... Are you glad that the Kermit Act sanctuary didn't stand up? 
I'll be real with you, and I'll take a note from Jay. I, I don't know a whole heap about that specific yeah. issue, and I'll front that. I will. <laughs> you know, can um, I just say something? You know, we've got the young Nats and young Act here laughing at every, every answer that some of the, our members give. It's hard to get up here and to debate things that we don't know, and to admit that we don't know it, 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 it takes a big... It absolutely, it absolutely is, Jay, but, you know, you guys have been asked to come here on behalf of your youth wings, on behalf of your party, to express opinions, and if your answer is, I'm not educated, I just actually don't think that's good enough, especially on things <laughs> like um, euthanasia and, you know, marijuana legalisation. I think it's been in the public arena for years, and if you haven't developed an opinion on that, I think it's ridiculous if you claim to be some sort of representative. Well, I've still got to September 19 to do that, right? I've still got to September 19 to become educated, so there's still time. Well, all right. Become educated today. Felix, you just mentioned youth wings, and you, in the, on, on camera in one of the, one of, one of the episodes, uh, you say, my opinion on youth wings in general is they're actually pretty toxic places. What do you, what do you mean by that? Oh, you know, I absolutely do think they're toxic places because they, they end up being a place very much where politics interact with youth, and it's a place where people, <laughs> people don't necessarily make good judgments. Um, I expressed that, you know, some month ago. I, I still believe that. You, um, you've had the misfortune to have a number of uh, young ACT members who've resigned from the party after, over allegations around yeah. sexual har harassment. What would be your message to those former members? Well, you know, we're doing our due diligence. The ACT party has engaged uh, one of the most qualified lawyers who deals with the stuff in the country, who has investigated the New Zealand Defence Force, who has investigated various workplaces. And I won't speak too much on it, you know, speak on it in detail until that investigation is over. But we're taking this very seriously. Young Act, as a result of those resignations, is not embarking on activities that might otherwise have embarked on during the election. We're not holding many events. We're not being very active on social media. We're not actively being as, you know, campaigning as hard as we might have because we take this so seriously. And ultimately, you'll see some changes in the coming you know, months, but, you know, we do take this seriously. It's a wider problem in youth politics. We've seen it in Young Labour. We've seen it in the Young Nats. We've seen it in politics at large, at people who we, you know, people who we expect to be more mature engage in this, you know, activity. And we do need to do better, and Young Act will do better. You. Ariana, you've been... You're a Parliament TV fan. You've been will have watched uh, some of the valedictories in the last couple of weeks. Um, three of those were from senior liberal women in the National Party. I'm thinking of uh, Nikki Kay, who's been a bit of a mentor to you, I think, of Paula Bennett, and of course of Amy Adams. And there are some concerns expressed from within the National Party, even that the party is increasingly becoming uh, in the grip of the conservative, religious conservative. Is that the kind of party you intend to be part of? Look, I don't think that that's what the party is. We're a big tent, and that's why I'm so proud to be part of the party. We like to have big discussions, etc., and we welcome people from all walks of life. So I don't think that's a fair comment. If you hang out with young Nats, but we probably don't agree on stuff, it would be quite easy to come up with something we don't agree on because we've all got different backgrounds, different opinions, and that's what's coming through. And I think you'll see that is what's going to come through the party. So I you know, respect what they've got to say, but no, I'm positive, feeling good. Jay, I wanted to ask you um, about the Provincial Growth Fund just, just quickly, because that's a, a big deal um, for the New Zealand First Party. What are the success stories in the Provincial Growth Fund specifically that you see happening? Well, you've got to look in Dargaville, you've got to look at Ruawai, where they're building infrastructure, you've got to look at Gisborne and Tairawhiti, you look at uh, Hamilton and Kirikirirua. We are investing $3 billion as part of our coalition government and with the Greens into regions that were neglected for nine years by the last national-led government. And that's a fact. We're investing into education, we're investing into transport, we're investing into infrastructure. This is where jobs are created, this is where people are supported, this is where people are educated into building a better future. So we need to, like I said, investment isn't an expenditure, it is an investment into the lives of everyday New Zealanders. And now for the last nine years, the regions have been, have been forgotten by the National Party. Why has, why has so little of the money been spent? I mean, well, why is there so much money left? Well, look, we all saw how COVID has affected a lot of things. Oh. Must be you had two sport. years before that. And we, COVID and, came up We had two ago. years before that and we how invested... How long does it take to get, for Shane to get out of bed? Two years? <laughs> wow. Oh, look, I can say a lot of things about the National Party, but I'll be mature about this. Shane Jones is one of the most hardest working members of Parliament. 
And I didn't... And look, and I know there are some former parliamentary colleagues here, and they will... I hope they will agree with me. No. Shane Jones... <laughs> We can't, we can't, we can't be, be sure that the no from the crowd was or wasn't. Must be. Yeah. But no, let me, let, me just, let me just say, you know, when we invest into infrastructure, when we invest into um, education, when we invest into schools and communities around this country, especially in our regions, and I travel there and I'm like, wow, there's actually big difference being made here. Thank you, Jay. Um, Adam, is a capital gains tax a good idea? I think it would have been one of the tools we could have used, but it's not the only tool. But are you, are, you, are you in favour of a capital gains tax? I'm in favour of any sort of tax system that seeks to redistribute wealth away from unproductive assets are into a working economy. Are you in favour of a capital gains tax? I'm in favour of any tax like that, and that includes capital gains. So does... Do, I mean, like, as, as Young Labour, are you guys, like, pushing, going, we understand you're being pragmatic and you have to do what you have to do, oh, big party, but we want rattling the cage going, give us a capital gains tax, or no? Oh, look, no doubt, for the next two months between now and the election, Young Labour will be working across the country to help elect a Labour government. But for the three years after that, I can promise you this, we're going to be the Labour Party's worst nightmare because we're going to be banging down their doors saying, what are we doing about these issues? How can we do more? How can we go further? That's what Young Labour does, and it's done it for years, and we have a strong history of doing so. There's a lot of things in Parliament that I don't think would have been done if it wasn't for Young Labour pushing the MPs to do better. OK, thank you. Um... We're, we're, we're reaching the final furlong of this debate. So to, to finish off, um, I'd like you to imagine that you've now got a magic wand and you have an opportunity to make a change in the manifesto of the party that you support. It might be adding something, taking something away, but something bold. What will you do with that power to change the manifesto of the National Party, Ariana? I think the one thing I'd really put in there, and I think we've actually still got it, but just really having it in writing is just putting in that sustainability is in the lifeblood of society. And that just brings in that whole environmental thing, which you know, I'm really passionate about. Um, yeah, it's in there, but not clearly in there. Jay, what are you going to go and talk to Shane about? Uh, I would have to say um, expanding on our education uh, policy or education manifesto. Uh, you know, the, if, for those who know the New Zealand First uh, Education Manifesto on that is if you spend three years studying a certain degree and then spend those, uh, use that degree in New Zealand for three years, then your debt's wiped. Um, I think expanding that and just elaborating more on that, I think that would be a, a good opportunity for New Zealand First. Felix, you can't well, have legalised you know, all drugs. Not, you know, it's already I, been on the news. I can't do that one. Yeah. Oh, I was going to do that one. Um... <laughs> Um, you probably, must have heaps. Probably a more liberal approach to crime then, you know, incarceration and that kind of thing. So um, the, the, yeah. the three strikes law part of the Ag Party, you yeah, would yeah, get, a lot get of rid of the, Yeah, yeah. OK, all right, cool, thank you. <laughs> Danielle. Oh. I think the, the easiest way to encompass all the change that I wish to see the, um, any government take on is honouring Te Tiriti. We still haven't seen our big parties um, really dive into that. We've seen, the, uh, we've seen the Greens start to do that, but, I mean, things like abolishing prisons, abolishing the police, everything, all these kinds of reforms that need to happen will always come back to honouring Te Tiriti, so that's what I'd like to see in our manifesto. <laughs> Adam, what are you going to power into the Labour Party manifesto? It would be making the voting age 16. I think that's a long overdue thing. <laughs> young Labour absolutely backs that. I think it's really important to engage young people early and often. Great answer. Thank you very much. You've all been absolutely brilliant tonight. Really appreciate that. This is a wrap. Thanks to New Zealand On Air. Thanks to the spin-off. Thanks to our young wings. Long may they flap. Yeah.